Hey guys, it's Dr. George here and I just wanted to do a brief video to explain the differences between daily prep and prep on demand. Here in Australia, both are included as part of the Australian prep guidelines and both are considered to be highly effective. There are some differences and I just wanted to highlight those. So daily prep is taken every day. When it's taken every day, we know that it offers really good protection for all people taking it. And that's a 99% reduction in risk of HIV infection. Now, there is prep on demand, also called intermittent prep. This is for people who either have really bad side effects to taking the tablet every day, who may have issues with their kidneys, or for people who um, really aren't having sex that often that would put them at risk of HIV infection. Importantly, we need to note that intermittent prep is only for men or trans women. If you own a cervix, if you're female, or if you are a male trans person, then intermittent prep is not if is not fully studied. So we can't guarantee that it's going to be able to have a high enough level of protection against HIV. So intermittent prep only for men, only for trans women. So, how does it work? When you feel that you are going to be having sex in a way that could lead to an exposure to HIV, you need to take two tablets of PrEP, two to 24 hours before you have sex. If you do have sex, then you need to take one tablet of PrEP every 24 hours until 48 hours has passed free of sex. It's very straightforward. Now, people were wondering, what's the efficacy of this? There has been a recent case in Australia and there were con some, some concerns that is intermittent prep as effective as daily prep? As previously mentioned, if you are a trans male, if you are a female, then absolutely you should be on daily prep. You should not be using intermittent prep. Now, if we look at the studies, so the IPAGE study coming out of France has had two um, sequential arms, and the first arm showed that it was 87% effective at reducing the risk of HIV. That is, when taken as directed, as I just previously described, it reduced the risk of HIV quite significantly, sorry, 86%. Now, there was a second open study that continued as part of the IPAGE study, and that number actually rose to 97%. So we know that the strategy is effective, it works, and there's a 97% reduction in risk of HIV infection per episode. So I suppose the thing is that you need to make a decision about what is going to be best for you. But when it comes to daily versus intermittent, if you're having a moderate amount of sex, then I just say go with daily. If you're only having sporadic risks of HIV infection, then it's probably best to consider um, intermittent prep if you are worried about taking a tablet every day. Some people come to me and they say they're worried about going on a holiday, like they're off to a, a trip to, I don't know, somewhere, and they're thinking, well, I would, I would like to have prep while I'm away. What I would recommend in those situations is you can do um, either intermittent prep or, or daily prep. However, if you're going to do the daily prep, you need to start the daily prep seven days before your travel, then take the tablet every day uh, during your travel, and then, depending on which study you look at, you need to take it for 7 to 28 days after your last potential exposure to HIV. The current guidelines in Australia say 28 days. However, there are studies that say it could be between 7 to 28 if you look at um, recent documents that have been published. But, of course, talk with your doctor. This is the important thing. If you are, in a, if you are worried or concerned, have a talk to an experienced prep provider who can provide all of this information for you. I hope this has offered some clarity. I know it's a little bit longer than I expected, and a little bit wordier than I expected, but please, if you have any questions, come on in, ask away, send me a message, and I'll do my best to get an answer for you. I hope this was helpful.